Hey guys, Mr. Farrell here. So, let's just see if anybody watches this weekend on my YouTube channel. So anyway, I went out to Walmart at 10 o'clock at night because my daughter had to have colored pencils, but that's what we do. So, but while I was there, look at that, these two calculators. So, this one is the one that we use in the classroom. And uh, this is, I think it's pretty much the exact same one. And then um, I did notice that they have the color screen, exact same price, which I thought was kind of interesting. Anyway, I'm going to talk about that marginal data, so let's just go to the next screen here. Hey, so I'm going to continue where I left off. Let's see what we were doing. Oh, right, it was marginal distribution. So the marginal distribution is the stuff that's in the margins right here. It's all the totals. So, remember this is a categorical two-way table, meaning we're comparing a couple of different variables. So you're either a man or a woman, or you're going to vote for Trump or Clinton. So it's either a yes or a no situation. So let's do the marginal distribution. So marginal distribution is the counts of each, but it's a lot more convenient um, and informative, I think, if we use percentages, and that's what... We we usually do. So how many, what's the percent of people that are going to vote for Trump? What's the percent for Clinton, right? Pretty straightforward. So you would do 222 and divide that by 4088. This divided by this, which gives us about 0.54% or 54% actually. So 54% are going to vote for Trump. And then you could just subtract it from 1, just like we did in class. So then you would say 186 divided by 408, and that would give you approximately 45%. Now these two percents have to add up to 1 or 100%. So there's something called um, a conditional distribution. So that's when we have a condition. So it's like, well... Um, what if we had, how many are going to vote for Trump provided that they're women? That's the condition, okay? The condition is that you have to be a woman in this situation. That's conditional distribution. So, of course, we would say, well, of the women, all the women here, divided by the total women. So it's 80 divided by 1, 69, and we're going to end up with point. 473 or 47%. And then, of course, how many are going to vote for Clinton? And we end up with 0.526. So that's marginal distribution. That's the totals. Conditional distribution, that's where you separate it out. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So let's talk about association. So association is where you have two variables and you think they're associated with each other in some way. So they have some kind, something to do with each other. So for instance, this might make sense. Um, if you play a lot of video games, your test scores might be a little bit lower than if you didn't play so many video games. You just don't have enough time to study if you're playing hours and hours of video games. So one is called an explanatory variable and one is called a response variable. So the response is, that's the outcome, right? Your test scores. And we say, well, what explains that low test score? Well, for this group of people, maybe it's the fact that they're playing too many video games. And the graph might, if we graph that, those numbers might look like that. So low time spent playing video games, higher test score, and the opposite. But you also have to look out for a lurking variable. So a lurking variable is something that you didn't account for. So, for instance, like this guy, Will Farrell, he has just found out about this awesome game called Call of Data. Uh, it's all about AP stats. So everybody is playing this new game, and um, they end up doing really well on their tests because it's all about statistics, Call of Data. So that would be maybe an example of a lurking variable, lurking variable that you just didn't really see and snuck up on you and messed up your graph. So there you go. Hey, I'll see you next time. Bye.